Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Lynn. I'm Graham. And we're glad you're here tonight to join us. I um, thought I'd have a different subject to talk about. And it came up in a conversation with somebody I was having who said January gives them the blues. They get very depressed. They get very down. They actually do not like the month of January. It's probably the worst month of the year for them. And I kind of felt guilty telling them it's one of my best months. I love January and I created it into kind of like the month from me. And um, I guess I have a different perspective on it. And do uh, you want me to share first and then you, you jump start, in? Or? Uh, you, okay. You. So in this conversation, I was shopping with somebody and we went out for the day and this was a couple of weeks ago and they were saying, oh, I can't wait till January's over. And we weren't even into January. I said, why? I love January. Oh, I can't stand it. And just the whole conversation with this person kind of made me think through of where we've been the last four or five months. And now I'm talking really like where I am in my area. We're in New Jersey. And so we live four seasons a year. I know some of you are in maybe a warmer climate and um, you might hear our dog snoring away, by the way. So there's not a whole lot we can do about that. But, um, you know, we go through the seasons. So we go through winter, spring, summer, and then fall. And let's start like the end of the summer. We're coming out of a nice warm season. We've been at the beach. We can do all kinds of fun things at the boardwalk. We live near the shore. Then we go into the fall season. Now you're anticipating kids going back to school. It's a new start, new season like that, the apple picking. You go into all the fall festivities. You get together with friends and family and barbecues and all these kind of things. And then from there, we go into, now we're anticipating holidays and we're anticipating the fun we're going to have and we're making our list of shopping and what are we going to buy gifts for each other and are we going to bake cookies and there's like lots of fun and just the planning and then anticipating the holidays and then you're who you're going to get together with what friends you're going to see what family you're going to see over the holidays all these things happen then the holidays come and you have turkey and you have ham and you have lasagna and you have all these things planned and everything's wonderful and put up a tree. You, you've, you know, visit and tour for lights and it keeps going. And then all of a sudden it's New Year's Eve. We're all excited that it's New Year's Day. Ugh. Now it's January 2nd. And this person just said, like, January, there's nothing to do. It's depressing. Now in New Jersey, today, the last couple of days have been very dreary, kind of gray. It's the winter gray color on the outside the trees are brown there's really no color everything looks right. kind of dismal almost desert like um you know we'll see spring popping up in the next i don't know six to eight weeks we'll start to see certain things changing and things like that we haven't had a brutal winter but it is cold you tend to want to stay inside and she just says i i just have nothing and I can understand, like, we have all this anticipation and all these things happening. Even if you're not part of it, you, like, you know, physically going to these events, it's just the buzz. There's a buzz in the air. Even, like, Hallmark movies, we've watched them for weeks and weeks and weeks, and now that has stopped. And But let me tell you my perspective. You have the January blues. You have the winter blues. You got you to gotta plan for January. I plan for it. Now, maybe you're in it and you're like, okay, like we're in January, whatever today's date is, middle of January. How do you plan for something? Well, we still have February and March, at least where I am, where it's similar weather, the gray, you know, the cold and all that kind of thing. And many of you maybe just don't want to go out and about because of what's happening and illness and things like that. But I plan for those things. Here's the thing. To me, all those four or five months of all the fun and festivities are great, but I get nothing done at home because we're out and about trying to, you know, get together with friends and family while the weather's good or anticipating for Christmas. So we were doing our shopping or whatever, you know, all these things. Life has just had a lot of activity. You get some things done, but you don't get everything done. I love January for this reason. 
I can plan projects. I look around and I'm like, how do I want 2022 to look in my home? You know what? That room's looking a little dismal. I think it needs a fresh coat of paint. Or I'm really tired of that desk over there. And should I get rid of that desk? Maybe I should look for another one. Maybe I should paint the desk. Maybe I should put the desk on the other side of the room. Maybe I should set up my office in the other room and bring maybe that TV that was in there and bring that in here. Or maybe I should put a new centerpiece on my table. Well, I really don't have a centerpiece. What do I have in my house that I can make a centerpiece with? Maybe go hit the thrift shop and pick up a few odds and ends that are cheap or go to Dollar Tree, go to Dollar General, pick up a few things that you can make. I just like to look around my home and go, you know what? It's time to declutter. You can reorganize, you can redecorate, you can think through rearranging. You don't even have to spend any money. You can use all the things in your own home. And we've done that. We've moved our dining room to the front of our house and our living room to the back of the house. We've switched that. If you have kids or you have a spare bedroom, if you have you know a couple of bedrooms, maybe switch which bedroom is yours and which bedroom is the spare bedroom. Just to add a little spice and things that, um, you know, baking maybe I didn't get to. As much as you bake over the holidays or you wanted to bake, how many of you were like, man, I was just too busy to bake. Now I'm doing the baking. So now instead of people I wanted to do things for Christmas that I couldn't, I'm now doing things now for them saying, well, it's a New Year celebration. I just wanted to let you know how much you, I appreciate you or I love you. And I can give them things like baked goods or you know, uh, a DIY or something now because I have the time to do it. And, you know, cleaning up all those things, maybe you have a basement you want to clean out. I don't know, but I think planning for those times are number one is how to keep yourself out of those blues because you have a list of projects. And if you're in it and you're like, well, I didn't plan for this. Well, we don't always plan for things in life either. Sometimes it just hits us up one side and down the other. And it's like, well, I didn't know I'd be staying home for the next two weeks. What am I supposed to do now? Well, what needs to get done? Write some things down. I recommend you write 10 things down that you want to get done in your home. Maybe it's just cleaning out that kitchen drawer. It sounds silly, but write it down. That's for me. I Graham comes from a whole different perspective. Yeah, I, I do. Um, Why do you? And... Well, uh, let me start off with uh, totally agreeing with you uh, that it, it comes down to uh, perspective. Uh, and because uh, it, it, if, if you don't have the, the right perspective on, on your day, then, you know, you need to move on from that. In fact, I was uh, sharing with a gentleman last night at... Uh, uh, a men's fellowship that I went to uh, um, at men's job. And uh, he was talking about the fact of how do I, how, when, you know, when I when I get up in the morning and I want to be able to to work with someone, I said, well, you know, there, there are a lot of things that we do. And simply my countenance. Mm -hmm. um, and what do I portray with somebody? And do I portray a, a happy face or do I show a face that, boy, I'm not going to talk to that guy, you know, and the people will avoid you because I will then pass on a bad mood to somebody else. And uh, so by, by doing that, you, you have, I can put, end up putting myself in a bad mood. Putting yourself in the winter blues. In the winter blues. So that's that's the one thing about a perspective. The other thing is, which Lynn's been sharing, is the fact that, um, yes, these other months, you, you naturally fall into, um, there are so many things going on that you almost, they are so structured that you don't have to worry about making it a structure because there are so many things going on. And you need to make sure that on those times, like in, in a January, 
when there are not those natural structures, you need to make sure that you create a structure so that like a routine like a routine so that when whatever that given month is i mean ours might be january but someone else might have a, another month mm -hmm. which is their low month and all of a sudden the month bottoms out mm -hmm. and you need to have something lined up the thing is with with myself i because uh, I'm on disability, I can very easily slip into, you know, well, you know, I don't have anything going on. So there's, there's no incentive to get up and, you know, do anything. And, get and dressed. I get dressed, you know, put on a fresh shirt. All those natural things that you would normally do on a given day. And all of a sudden, I, I, I don't look my best. And then when Lynn comes home from work, she's like, oh, is that the same shirt you had on two days ago? I'm like, well, and, and did you comb your hair? Well, you know what I mean. So it, you, you, you want to look good for your spouse. And, and it just makes a world of difference. Uh, so, and then in reference to um, things that you can do, um, you know, Making a list, because without actually putting it down on paper, uh, the, there's something to be said for writing it down. And you can, now I can, you know, go wherever I'm going, and I walk, and I can see it. All right, that's what I'm going to work on today. Uh, with, you know, whether as uh, it's, I'm going to tackle that project that I've been wanting to get to all month. And, uh, you know, man, we always have that, that as they, as they call it, a honeydew list, you know, but for single people, it could be a, a your own honeydew list, your own honeydew list. but it, it, it's that, that, that to do list of things that I, I've been putting off for a time, you know, um, whether it's you know tackling your tool shed and categorizing things um and i you, you keep on putting things off those are the times you, you you work on those things when when the weather outside is is not you know or it's a, a bad season like you said it's just your low month it's a good time yeah. to um, I, I know my grandmother always said to me, idle hands are the devil's tool. And I find myself, like you were saying, when you, when you have a lot going on, you don't have to worry about planning things because there, there are almost like anticipate your, you've got this going on. You got that. Oh, we got this event here. Like your schedule is already naturally, kind of preset, yeah. naturally set. But then when you have those low months where there's not a lot going on, now, if you're an extreme introvert, you're happy. I don't want to see people. I don't want to go out. But even on a, if you're an introvert, which I am an introvert, even though people don't think I am, I am. And I really enjoy being by myself. I still need to get out and about. I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. But um, now we have each other. So, you know, we've got company in the home. I've got our youngest still lives with us. But there's a lot of people out there that, live alone, not by choice. Some are widowed, some never married, some kids are grown, some are whatever the case might be. Doesn't matter why you're alone. One of the things with Graham, when he first had to go on disability, it wasn't like, oh, let's plan ahead for when you go on disability. It was like one day he was working and the next day he wasn't. Right. And it was complete shock to the system, complete shock to our budget. I was stressed out because of money. Where are we going to get the income? He was, I don't even know if you were stressed out. You were more in shock. Now yeah. what do I do? I don't go to work. I don't have to get up at a certain time. I didn't have to get dressed. And we were just talking about this earlier. You, The routine, the normal routines of getting up and getting dressed and washing your face and brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, having a cup of coffee, eating your breakfast, opening your planner or the newspaper or your Bible or a book you want to read or watching the news, those routines 
need to be in place. That you, if you have to write that routine down, my morning routine, my afternoon routine, my evening routine, block out time that these are your routines because the days and the weeks that go by that are very long and dreary for you, at least you know you're going to get up and about. And then in between those routines is when you can plan these projects or the things that you've always wanted to do. Graham was saying earlier, one of the biggest things, and he's been somewhat counseling somebody, go and get and create a new interest. Maybe you always wanted to do photography. Right. Well, I don't know how to do photography. Well, you're not supposed to know everything in life, but you have a phone. You can. You don't have a camera. Use your your phone as your camera. What's the best resource you said? YouTube. YouTube. Why? Because uh, it's it's there, and all you have to do is type in, you know, how do I, you know, how do I fix the uh, uh, a dripping dripping sink mm -hmm. or something. And you know, you, you somebody got, there will tell somebody you. Somebody there will would love to explain how how to do it. And if you're not sure, you can put you can pause it, and uh, you don't have to look worry about them looking over your shoulder. You don't have to leave the house. Y yeah, you know, you're, if um, you're in a position of not being able to leave the house, YouTube can be your friend. There is a community to be said. Just even in in our own community with our channel. People are connecting with each other, talking to each other. You leave me a comment. I talk to you. There's a way you can email. The other thing we were talking about, too, and I don't want to make the video too, too long, but um, being held accountable. When Graham was first on disability, it was tough. You went through a very deep depression. Right. And... Um, we won't get into that maybe on this video. That might be a good one to do in the future. Correct. But it was a couple of years, and I had to go to work and smile. Everything's fine. Graham's doing great. And he was home in deep depression. Now, that's another video as to, well, why didn't you tell people and all this? There's a time and place and who you trust and all that. But one of the best things you can have, now Graham had me kind of being his cheerleader, Find some, someone you can hold yourself accountable to and someone that you trust that can be your cheerleader. Now, if you're living alone, then you're going to have to find someone. I don't know, your kids, an aunt, uncle, whatever, you know, mom, dad, maybe a good friend, maybe a church, uh, somebody in your church family that you can go and say, hey, I really struggle in the months of January, February, and March. I get really down and I get very you know, really get the blues and I want to fight it. I want to get past it. Can you help me with that? And, and they're probably going to say, well, what do you need? Well, can you just encourage me? Like, can I, can you make a point like twice a week we meet on the phone and you, you ask me questions, you know, they need to ask you pointed questions. Are you getting up in the morning? Are you getting yourself dressed in the morning? Well, I've been in my pajamas for seven days now and you know, my teeth are turning green because I haven't brushed them. And I just don't feel like taking a shower. And I know I smell, but why bother? I live alone. Why bother? You live alone. You still need to take care of yourself. You were worth it to take care of yourself. You were worth it. And maybe they could be that cheerleader to say, listen, right now, Lynn, I want you to hang up the phone. I want you to go in the shower. Take the hottest shower you can. Brush your hair. Wash your hair. Brush your teeth get a fresh outfit on. I want you to collect all the laundry that's piled up. I want you to put on a load of wash. I want you to go in that kitchen. I'm sure you haven't done your dishes. Get your dishes done. And I want you to write down three things today that you want to accomplish and get a cheerleader. And um, if you don't have family and friends that you trust, maybe somebody in your church family, let's say you have absolutely nobody whatsoever that you can count on for that. We were talking about maybe there's a support group you can join. Graham has epilepsy. We could join an, um, an epileptic support group. You have you don't have a disability and there, that type of support group. Maybe there's a support group for other things that you're going through. Or Graham mentioned to me earlier that um, maybe you could, if you're into photography, he's into, uh, what do you call it, ancestry? Ge genealogy. Genealogy. There are groups in the library that meet and they, as a group and you can meet and chit chat about the same interest. And by doing that, you might find 
that you connect with somebody that lives in your area and you can say, hey, you want to get together for coffee and we can discuss this? You don't want to leave the house. Maybe you're not in a position where you can leave the house. Join an online support group. There are Facebook groups. There are so many things that are out there. And you know what? I'll close with this unless you have anything else you want to add. Nope. I'll close with this. I always told people, people would say, oh, you're so good at counseling. No, I'm not. I'm not a good counselor because I'm going to tell you to get a life and get on with it. And that sounds very harsh, but I have to, you know, sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader. There's not always going to be somebody there, but I have to already, if I have routines in place, if it's worth doing, it's worth having a routine. I heard Andrea Mills say that one time and that stuck with me, but I have to create my routines and getting up in the morning and getting dressed and doing all the things that I need to do and making lists of things I want to accomplish. You have to be your own cheerleader and you can find yourself getting in a slump. Tell yourself to knock it off. I got to get up. I got to do something. One of the biggest things I find too about beating the blues is doing for others. We have said that many times I'm like, oh, I just, I, I'm not feeling good. I, I, you know, emotionally drained, whatever. Now there's something to be said for, um, taking time for you, but there are things that are to be said for, you know what, Lynn, get up off your, you know, your little tush here and go bake bread for somebody. Well, I don't know how to bake bread. Great, great project. Learn from YouTube how to bake easy, an easy loaf of bread. I can watch YouTube. I can learn how to bake the bread. I can gather what provisions I need and I can bake bread for my neighbors. Maybe the first loaf came out like a brick. Okay, you know, throw it out to the birds. Start practicing baking bread, something where you're going to start doing for others. You'll find yourself coming out of like, well, now that if I have to go deliver the bread, I better, better comb my hair, better put on some lipstick or put some earrings on or put a fresh shirt on. So what can you do to fight the blues? Plan ahead for the times that you know are going to be tough. If you're in a time where you didn't plan it and now you're in it, start make writing down your routines for the day that you need to do to keep you going, to keep you motivated. Write 10 projects down, as big or as small as they are, that I've got to work on these things during this time period. Find somebody that will hold you accountable and be your cheerleader. If you can't find that, find a support group. Take some classes online, Skillshare. You've got YouTube. There's all kinds of other free classes that you can take. Some you can pay for. Some are free. Join a support group. Join a, a, a group of people that are into like-minded things like photography or mm. Graham's into sketching. Maybe join a, an artist club or whatever the case might be. Start doing things. You know, this is the perfect time of, you know, I've always wanted to fill in the blank. Two years ago, almost two years, it's coming up. To, yeah, wow. Two years and a couple of days. Oh my, happy anniversary, Lynn Wilson. Wow, I didn't realize how close that was. January 20th will be my two year anniversary on YouTube. It took me five, seven years. I've wanted to do it and I finally did it. Fill in the blank, I've always wanted to and maybe these are the months that you have the time that you can start a YouTube channel, you can start a podcast, you can write that article you've always wanted to write, you can write a book. You can paint a picture, whatever you want to do, but make sure you know that you are worth it and you've got to be your own cheerleader. You've got to get up and you've got to move. You've got to do, you've got to get yourself going. Don't sit there, don't wallow in it. If you really have to have some pity on yourself, my grandmother was another thing she said, you have seven minutes of self-pity every day. You can sit on the toilet, she said, for seven minutes and have all the pity you want. After that, you get off the pot and you got to get moving and you got to get doing something in life. Remember, you only have one life to live. Don't waste it. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good one. We'll catch you all on the next video.